So our next speakers today are uh, both members of Save the Rivers staff. Lauren Eggleston. Lauren grew up in the North Country and spent her childhood on the shores of Lake Ontario and the river. Lauren joined Save the River in 2020. She holds a Master of Science in Structural Geology from the University of Alberta. Lauren found a love for education and environmental advocacy with the National Park System and New York State Parks. And her work at Save the River focuses on teaching and collaborative research. Robin Hall is our education coordinator. Robin recently moved to the area from her hometown in Florida where she graduated from the University of West Florida with her bachelor's degree in environmental studies. After an internship in 2020 as an environmental educator in the Thousand Islands, Robin fell in love with the area and decided to move back. Through the National Park Service, New York State Parks and activist groups, she found a passion for environmental education. In her spare time, Robin enjoys any activities that involve the outdoors and loves a good book. So Lauren and Robin, I'll turn it over to you. We're just going to do a mic check. Everybody good? Okay, so thank you for coming, and today we are, I'm just going to use teacher voice, this is what's going to happen. So today we're talking about um, sort of a recap of our education program over the last year, as well as launching the floating classroom, which is the second part of the talk that we'll get into, and we're really excited about this part. I'm Lauren, this is Robin. <laughs> okay, so for our 2022 recap, we had a really successful year. Um, coming, I won't say out of COVID completely, but uh, on the tail end of the pandemic, we weren't really sure what we would expect. Um, we were hoping to maybe reach a thousand students and we had an incredibly successful year. Uh, apparently I don't get to do that slide yet, so you're just gonna have to wait in anticipation for a moment. Um, our On the Water program specifically, we had 130 students participate in this program. Most of them had never been out on the water before. Uh, they ranged from kindergartners through high school students. And the tours that we took them on focused largely on getting them out on the water and out on the river. And then we went to the Rock Island Lighthouse, which is a state park and a site that most of them hadn't seen before. Students learned about all sorts of things. Uh, if you were a kindergartner, you focused more on landmarks and how to find yourself on the river. If you were an older student, like a middle school student, you might focus on water quality, how to run basic water quality tests. And then across the board, everybody learned about freshwater mussels. So that was from kindergartners all the way through our high school students and even a couple of college students learned about freshwater mussels. All right, so for in the classroom, we educated about 475 students alone, um, aside from on the water. So um, K through 12th focused on class, sorry, on common turn migration, stream water quality, and macro invertebrates. Don't mind me learning how to use a mouse. Okay, so in hopes to um, reach even more kids this year, we developed an educator guides um, about last month. So it is going to focus on spring programs as all of our in the classroom programs, including new curriculum that we're launching. You can learn more about it out on our education table. We do have pamphlets um, that you can take with you as well. Um, it has on the water programs and our new program that we're gonna be talking about today. Finally get to do this slide. Okay, so by the numbers. The total number of students that we reached through um, going out to partner events from in the classroom and on the water is 2,323 students. So that was a phenomenal turnout. We were really excited about it. We also closed out the DEC Invasive Species Grant. That was a three-year program in partnership with the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe and the New York State Museum. Uh, that was really where the freshwater mussels education came into play. We closed out the Fresh Sound Foundation, the photo of the kids 
measuring numbers on the bottom numbers slide. <laughs> That's what that one was from. That was for uh, trash cleanup. Through trainings for educators, we reached about 45 uh, teachers. And then through our junior riverkeeper and riverkeeper programs, we um, empowered about 157 people to get out and be our eyes and ears out on the water. Most of those were junior river keepers. There's about 40 adults. All right, so what's next for our education program? So we have several events already planned and more on the way. So far, um, our in the class programs will start in March and go through April. Then we'll go into our on the water programming that will take place in May and June. We're focused on Mac Nature Center in um, Wellesley Island State Park. We are gonna partner with the Thousand Islands Art Center with their after school program um, in March as well. And then we have a few Zoo New York events um, in the summer that we'll be doing. And the main part of our talk, if I can find where the mouse is, our floating classroom. So the floating classroom is a half day program um, and it's kind of designed as a day camp. So this is an opportunity for students to be out on the water during the summer rather than just focusing on the school year. Uh, we have a couple goals through the program. Uh, we want to expose them to, you did this slide before, um, we want to expose them to educational experiences out on the St. Lawrence River. And the big things that we want to address, I'm going to let Robin talk about. <laughs> Thank you. I was just gonna let you keep going on your roll. Um, so we're gonna do STEM enrichment during the summer. We'll focus on personal growth experiences, local context with um, shipping on the St. Lawrence River and the history of it. And we really wanna get them involved in citizen science as well. So the key differences between on the water and floating classroom is really enriching their experiences. We really wanna reach children that don't normally get out on the St. Lawrence River. So we've done that through um, our on the water programs, but floating classroom is kind of gonna, gonna bridge that gap with our older kids, so 12 to 15 year olds. It'll take place over the summer primarily. Um, we'll do a again STEM experience, the field experience, team building. They're gonna have more hands-on research opportunities. Um, so we'll have several things on board that Lauren will kind of break down a little more for you. Um, and then they're gonna build their own data set that we can use to compare to past and future. Um, and maybe possibly use it in our geographic inf information system, sorry, long word. Um, and for those that don't necessarily know what that is, that's gonna be how your GPS works. So it's really exciting to be able to get into that. Okay. So there are different experiences that each student will go through when they go out on the floating classroom. The first one is field observation and location. So this one, oh, the slide did something here. Uh, this one is kind of the things that you would be expected to do if you were a scientist doing field work. So they'll go out and they'll record things like what the weather is like, if the, what the water conditions are, the temperature of the air and the water, uh, pH, species present, uh, if the water is murky or not. And then one of the things that we're going to teach them to do is how to take out a pa paper chart and locate themselves on it. So they'll learn that skill and then they will also see how your GPS builds into a data set that you can then use digitally. So they're gonna learn both aspects of that. All right. So one of our experiences will be a Secchi disc study. So this is going to be used for water quality testing. Um, in this picture, if you can see it, it is a disc as it's properly named. So the students will drop this disc down into the water and that depth of disappearance is going to measure our transparency and turbidity of the water. So what they're gonna do primarily with this is again, build that data set. We have past data from our on the water programs that we can compare it to, and then again, future. Um, we hope to really use this to compare trends of water quality throughout um, our river so that we can keep track of that and you know keep educating the kids with it. The next bit that we're going to do, so again, they're going to experience all of these. The next one is a plankton survey. So for this, we're gonna do two different ones. We're going to have them do a horizontal toe and then also a vertical toe. And then they can compare and contrast between the two. They'll identify the species that they find. Uh, we'll have microscopes on board, so they'll be able to 
put them right on the slides and check it out. And then one of the things that we're really trying to drive home is that invasive species are present on all different scales. So you might find them on the plankton scale, you might find them in plants, you might find them in mammals. It's just making sure that they see that that's not limited to the things that you can see. It's also sometimes microscopic. All right, she stole my thunder with the aquatic invasive part. So another one will be the aquatic plant survey. So it's conducted by a weighted rake toss. So the kids, um, this will actually take place on land off of the dock. So it'll happen at the end of our tour. Yes, thank you, our tour. So when we come back in, they'll go on the dock. They're gonna toss this rake in, they'll haul it back in. And the plants that they bring in, they're going to sit down and they're going to identify them. So the main focus will be on invasive plant species. So this way we can track in certain areas whether the invasives are increasing or hopefully decreasing. And again, it helps the kids realize that invasive species take place outside of just the animal kingdom. And a lot of invasive plants can look similar to native ones, so it gives them that opportunity to tell the differences with it. And again, gives us our trend to keep tracking that. I will also say that these are local kids. We're hoping to hit local kids, and we are also hoping that they will eventually become WISP stewards. So we're trying to make that flow work. Okay, so one of the other experiences is to sort of zoom in on shipping on the St. Lawrence. And, oh, you have a clicker. Can you point it out on there? So this is a photo by Andy Kane that actually has the, the AE Vickery in it. You can't see it too clearly, but it's down there, kind of by a signature. Uh, so this, while we're out on the boat tour, we'll stop at the AE Vickery dive location. And this is an opportunity to discuss a whole bunch of historical and cultural and recreational uses of the river. So it ties in all the science that we're doing with how people interact with the river now. So we'll talk about things like underwater archaeology. Um, hopefully we'll bring on an underwater archaeologist to talk to them about this bit. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the diving industry. We'll talk about historic shipping on the St. Lawrence. We might talk about the War of 1812 and sort of tie all of that in so that they've really got that picture of recreation, industry, history, and local context of where they are and how we are all there, how we all interact. Ooh, I missed a slide. Right, so our tentative schedule, right now we have four dates planned. The idea is to get about 15 students per trip out um, four dates planned is kind of dependent on the budget. We might have to cut it down to three. Um, but they will depart around 9 a.m. We'll come back to shore around 12, so it's that half day. They're going to experience all of these different things. And we'll see, but the, the dates are tentatively two in July and two in August. Okay, so what do we hope to achieve? So with 15 per uh, trip, we're hoping to reach about 60 students. Um, get them out on that river, direct hands-on interactions uh, during the summer. And we would really love to get a military youth day. Um, a lot of families and youth on Fort Drum are very unaware of the beauty of the St. Lawrence River that is 30 minutes north of them. So we really want to tie into Fort Drum and that military youth so that we can get more education on there because it's such a large um, population on there. And you know our main goal is to empower our generations to come, and we really want to get them more involved in the science world. So our funding source for this, we were really fortunate. We got a grant from the St. Lawrence River Research and Education Fund. Uh, so that is where our mainstream of funding for it is. Um, again, we're hoping to find an additional source of funding so that we can make that military day completely free. The general admission is going to be about $20 per student. Um, so we're trying to make it really affordable for families so that they can send their kids out with us for a half day. And thank you. Uh, if you have any questions for us, we can take some now. We will also both be out at the education table right next to the Coast Guard. So just look for them and you'll find us. And um, we've got pamphlets and we have more information on this if you're interested. And thank you.